I mean, I looked, I saw the videos on YouTube, yeah. the, the run through thing that you did of like the the room in where the sheriff's office was. It yes, that's the demo. Yeah, it looks really cool. Very oh, eerie. You. Very. Uh, you've nailed exactly what you. Were, yeah, I assume yeah. you've nailed what you were going for. The, oh, look, the look and the feel of it. We're very happy with how the spe- spe- uh, specifically the demo looks. Can we pull that up on YouTube? Uh, maybe. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, when you start a game, where do you begin? What do you do first? Well, that's the thing. It's um, that's a. A very good question. A lot of people just go like, "Wow, that looks great." Anyway, uh, <laughs> but people. It's all right having the big idea, but like, yeah. where, what's the first thing you have to do? Well, that's 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 obviously you need one a game engine, I imagine. Yes, uh, we we start out uh, the, the the actual mechanics of the game when we block in the level inside of uh, Unreal Engine. Unreal. I knew it was going to be that yeah. or Frostbite or... or Unity. Yeah. 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 But um, we we've dabbled in Unity and we've dabbled. Are those free to access to anybody? Um, Unreal is. Um, you have to pay like a royalty after a certain amount of earnings. Um, okay. And Unity has a different license and structure. I think it's a, a similar one, and then you can actually just pay for a solid license. Okay. Um, there's like Unity and Unity Pro, but Unreal's just free. So when you get the engine, are you can you pretty much do what you want with it, or yes, is there, much. is there limitations of it, or um, th- there are some limitations, obviously, but. Um, that's been mitigated a little bit with this new generation of consoles coming out right, um, of course. because the engines are more designed to the current like things that are on display for example like uh the consoles really dictate what's coming next if you know what i mean right um because people want to be have their games be, be most accessible to as many people as possible absolutely um so we had to take into consideration stuff like well can the ps4 do this can the xbox do that um, and the engine has optimization settings that help to facilitate that. Okay. So where are you planning this game to be available, even just a demo? Well, we've already reached out with uh, Xbox. Um, so they're quite good with the ID game, the independent games, yes. aren't they? Yeah, that, that's kind of how we've gone around it, you see, the ID at Xbox. Mm. But then, um, yeah, we, we were actually blown quite away. Uh, last August, I think it was, we got like a, a legal contact from Xbox, reached out and he's like, this is an NDA, this is a contract, don't don't talk about anything that we talk about from this point. And I was like, oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a bit more real than I expected. Uh, Serious. <laughs> yeah. Um, and from that point, it, um, it's kind of been the waiting for us to give them something to show, which is what the demo is going to be. Ah, cool. So, yeah. So it's been really... So me and Tech are both exciting. Xbox. So will that demo be available? As soon as we get approved. <laughs> cool. So yeah. yeah I, d- I don't know if I'll play it. I, I suck at horror games. Well, it was, it was, it's just just to see it, it the, mm. fact, the fact that it's made by someone in Cumbria. Yeah. I'd be like, "Wow, <laughs> is it on? It's here." Oh, the environment. What's it called? The environment fly through. Is this the one? Yeah. Maybe yeah, turn the sound off or down. Yeah, the the music we chose from. Was it? Uh, turn it off and yeah. You what know. just? Yeah, the music was from a. Um, I'll put it on slightly. <laughs> what's he called? Oh, okay. I forgot his name now, unfortunately. Mayu. He does uh, free horror, like copyright free music on YouTube. Okay. Wow. Do, do you know Creepypastas? No. No? It's like horror stories that have been written by just everyday people. Okay. And then people on YouTube read them out in a kind of freaky <laughs> way. But they overlay it with this music and it really adds to it. So we thought those, you know, that, that that's those tracks need to be included. This, this looks like one of those games where any corner you go around or any room door you go into, something, something bad could happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, what we're trying to capture in this, I mean, it's changed quite a bit from that point, but um, cool. it flashes between the two different uh, realities, let's call it, like the waking world and the nightmare world. And um, Oh, right, okay. So basically, in the demo, we haven't got a video of that, unfortunately, because as I said, it was everyone was like, oh, it's too short. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was like, right, delay. Um, but basically what happens is you go through a certain door and then something happens, which triggers Fiona's anxiety, which is the main mechanic of the game. Okay. Um, and basically she goes into this kind of like a panic attack state and then she comes to and the world's changed around her. Ah, and right. uh, that's how we're planning to impact the game on the player, have the environment react to her state right within it so when like when you started programming the game had you already written the game like you knew exactly how it was going to begin and what was going to happen in the middle and how it was going we to did. end we did that's not the story anymore but <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah it, it started out one so how does that happen did you get ideas as you go along kind of yeah um initially or feedback your turn or feedback sometimes some 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 sometimes feedback yeah uh 
we've had a number of iterations of the game. Like one was um, you played as children who were exploring a, a like an abandoned farmhouse, right? And it was like this certain creature or entity was there, and you had to wear a tinfoil hat to stop it from probing your mind and stuff. <laughs> and then it totally evolved from there, and it, <laughs> it's changed so much in the time that we've been working on it. Though it's been crazy. It just seems. It seems. I looked at the. Uh, and like full resolution on YouTube, the, the mm -hmm. video, I was like, this looks amazing. Oh, and I'm, I'm, I'm similar to tech. I'm not really into horror movies or games. Yeah. But I'll definitely be getting this. No, oh, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, I mean, it, the mobile marketplace specifically, that's the biggest marketplace for games. Mm. At the minute, it's insane. Like, how many people play mobile games? And spend money in those games. Yeah, like, uh, what was it? PUBG Mobile? They made 300 billion in their lifetime. <laughs> It's only a few years old. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it was something like they make 7 million a day in microtransactions. Wow. Yeah, microtransactions. And that's the, uh, just, that's a bit of a grey area, isn't it? FIFA yeah, got in trouble a bit for that. And COD. They did, uh, loot boxes and stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's a bit, trying to encourage or almost force yeah. players to, force players to have to, like, pay to, to win, basically. Yeah, yeah. Which it should never be. You should be able to play a long time and play well and unlock everything. Oh, for sure, yeah. The money side of it should be optional, mm -hmm. but like it's, it's I, I don't really like FIFA personally because of its microtransaction ultimate team situation. I don't do ultimate team, so it's not a problem to me. I <laughs> really dislike that because it's like they'll charge you full price for a game, and especially going at this next generation, it's ten pound more. <sighs> so it's like seventy quid now instead mm. of sixty, and then it's like oh yeah, it's like three pound a pack. Or, I don't know how much it is. No idea. I, I couldn't tell you, um, but like. They make some ridiculous amount of money every month from just microtransactions. I bet they do. As well. I don't know if it's just because I'm older. I'm I'm nearly forty, and right. when when Ultimate Teams came out, I I looked at it, I tried it, and I went, "Don't get it." Yeah, I know. I just want to play FIFA. Yeah, I, I, just, I literally just if I could uninstall or remove Ultimate Teams, mm. I would have about f four Fifas ago. <laughs> See, they'll never remove it at this point though, because they just keep making money on it. Oh, it's it's the, it's the young kids really all playing yeah. against each other and trying to get the better players and stuff. I had a bit of an Ultimate Team addiction when I was at uni. Oh, right. Yeah, spending a lot of money on on these packs. You don't have to it's spend. Addi it's addictive. It is definitely is, and yeah. I nearly fell into it again on FIFA 20 a few months ago. Oh no! Oh, stop stop playing it now. <laughs> this just turned into a counselling session now. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> my name, my name is Tech, and I'm addicted to FIFA. <laughs> You, no. can't, you can play the game to win in-game currency and then spend those on players and packs and whatever you want. But, you know, obviously they encourage you to spend real money on it. And all the YouTubers online are spending, it's like, oh, 200 quid pack opening sort of thing. Mm. So they go and do it. And then the kids are like, oh, I want to do that as well. Yeah. Spend loads of money on these packs. And they don't quite get what they want. So they get another pack. Yeah. And then they're spending a little bit more. It's really bad. Five quid. And then the next week you're spending 10 quid a time. And the next time it's 20 quid a time. <sighs> My saving grace in all of this is... I could spend all the money in the, well it doesn't matter what players I would have in my team I'm shit at the game so <laughs> it's not going to make any difference so I, I will not I, be playing any money I was shit at the game as well but it's like oh, I need better players where's oh, my yes. wallet I remember this a few years ago was it not some sort of uh, Facebook thing about how you, you are terrible at FIFA I think I lost a lot I think I lost 8-0 wow. so as a forfeit I think I had to make a group on Facebook <laughs> <laughs> about how bad you are at the game <laughs> yeah Oh, it's just banter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Slash bullying. <laughs> that was a long time ago. I'd almost forgotten oh, I'm all about it. I'm a new man now. I'm a new... Oh. I'd almost forgotten oh, sorry, all about sorry, it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping I got old wounds there. <laughs> got to go home and buy some track uh, packs just to, just to make up for What's it. funny is we made that group. Everyone had a laugh. It was great. And then years later, there was people requesting to join the group. <laughs> 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 you heard about this legendary story of this, the world's worst FIFA player. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, that's quite a quick claim to fame, that. Yeah. Me and you need a game, to be honest. I've never played it, FIFA, so it really is the worst. Uh, I'm just still getting over my addiction. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been one for addiction in anything. Like, I've had friends who can't walk past a fruit machine without putting some money in. Right. And they just pound after pound. And then they'll, they'll win £20 and they'll think it's great, even though they've put £40 in before they won the £20. Oh. Right. And then they'll like, put the £20 straight back Yeah, in. that totally <laughs> gets lost. Yeah. I've never, like, I've never done football gamble. I did a little bit when I was at, when I was at uni, and I... Do you do the accumulators where you put like a put a pound on and you yeah. have to pick a winning game from every league? Once Anelli won two grand because but Chelsea let me down. Chelsea right. lost at home to Norwich a few years ago, and I was like, of all the games, that's the one you think. Oh, I've got two grand. The in. least yeah. obscure one. And, yeah. But then that from like it must be in my chemically in my brain. I was like, well, I'm def I'm not going to do that again because mm. what are the chances I'm going to win? And then 
<laughs> it's a pound, yeah. so I'm just not going to bother. It's too no, much hassle. I've never really got into that stuff. I mean, video games, I'd say maybe you've had a bit more of an addiction, gra- addic- addictive grab on me uh, over the years, but like that would be like World of Warcraft. That's something I just can't That was kick. one of the first ones, wasn't it? It was a big MMO back in the well, day, yeah. spend in the game? Uh, not really. Um, it's a subscription base. So it's oh, like that was it, yeah. £10 yeah. a month, and every month it was £10 a month. But then they started adding sneakily stuff in, like, oh, buy this mount that you can ride. Uh, and, like, yeah. You've got 100 others, but this one costs £10. And uh, it's like, mm. But, like, collectors want all of them. Yeah. I so. suppose, in that respect, they would collect stuff in real life. Yeah. So you collect stuff in the game. Yeah. That's- but it's but when the, people are competing and they want to buy the, this and that to try and get yeah. a, a up, one up on, on the other competition. That's I mean, it's a game dangerous. that me and my partner have both played for about 10 years now. World of Warcraft? Yeah. yeah. I've played it for a little bit. Off. Have you ever played it? No, maybe I've played a little it for bit, a little bit, but I was never really into them multi, massive multi-up mm-hmm. online games. Never really got into that. I, I couldn't really get into playing on PC. Right. Oh, that right. wasn't. I was always consoles, uh, so I just couldn't quite get used to it. I started off on PC. Right. Now I'm console. I've gone back twice. I think I've gone back and forth. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I got to the point where I just want a console. Where I just turn it on and play a game. Yeah. It's a my PC. I do like work stuff on it. Like mm-hmm. I do audio editing and video editing sometimes. Yeah. Don't really want to play games. I just want a, a box that will play the games. So. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's something that we were talking about the other day, especially with like the next gen and even the old gens and stuff. It's like. Like Cyberpunk 2070 is coming out. Mm, finally. I don't want to mess around with that on PC, getting the right stats and stuff to get the, yeah. the perfect Filling with your resolution and, and your yeah. Yeah. anti-aliasing and all that. I just want to bang it in and enjoy the game yeah. and not worry about, oh, is it going to work this time or not? And Yeah, that's the I point mean, I got to. Yeah, and that's what these consoles are for, obviously, the, the, for the people that don't want to mess around with settings because <clears throat> it's designed that way. But we're, we're getting more cross-platform. Yeah, that's been great. Which is... I call you cool. been very fun with cross platform. I've done a bit of Halo got cross platform. Dis- disable PC players though. They'll, they have got an advantage though, surely. Hacks. All the hacks. Well, the hacks, but just generally the mechanics of having a keyboard and a mouse is quicker yeah. than what you can do on a, on a controller, is it? Kind of, yeah. I, I mean, like I've, you can up your sensitivity, well. I know, but you can. But I mean, you can put keyboard and mouse on console as well. Yeah, is that is that was, have Microsoft done an official mouse and keyboard for the Xbox One? I don't know. I've never really. I don't think so. They've enabled the support. Yeah, you so, can get third-party ones. Yeah, uh, you, I don't know. I think you can get into dive into a bit of a hole with keyboards and, and <laughs> yeah, you, you know, can, get yeah, the, the sure. right spec. So if they release their own one, that barely anybody would buy it because it'd be way they, better ones. Yeah, they'd be way better ones. They'd make it decent, but they'd way overprice it. So yeah, no one would buy it. Exactly. They they instead released their Elite controller for, for games. Yes. So like the it had like paddles on the back. Yeah, yeah. Just a bit of I've a over engineered. <laughs> uh, I've got I've got a white and gold one. Right. Um, but I yeah, cross-platform I think is huge potential. Can you imagine, uh, like, just say, like, uh, COD, mm-hmm. all Xbox players playing PlayStation players? See that, that that's the kind of stuff that I would love to see. But they just mix everyone up, and it's like do platform, yeah, do platform. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah, like I'd love that. Or what if you were playing and you didn't know? Yeah, it, it, it just take that out of the equation. It's just players. Yeah. See, they put like labels on it at the minute, though. So you're like, oh, he's winning because he's a, play- a PC player. He's got a keyboard and mouse on him, and it's like, yeah. Can you not just remove that? Is then... that scientist? Does that been proven? Then do PC players generally do better? I don't know because a lot of PC players use controllers. Oh right. So okay. like, I know if you... that doesn't make sense to me. If I was using a PC, it would be, that'd be the reason I want it for a keyboard and a mouse. I mean, you can get some really smart controllers for PC. Like, uh, I think there's Scuf ones. Right. Like, they're like custom made and they're, they're amazing. But yeah, um, like. Nick Marks, I think he plays on PC, and he uses a controller. I suppose there'll be some players who defy all that. Yeah, yeah. But you're always, yeah, then you're always going to get, oh, yeah, but you're on PC. Yeah, exactly. So uh, how, I don't know how you could level that playing field out. No, it's difficult. Like, it, with Fortnite, for example, my boy plays that all the time. And, like, you can change the view distance and the grass foliage and stuff like that on PC. I don't know if you can on console. Probably, I would doubt so, it. Like, I never never played it on console. No, no, I've very rarely played it at all. Yeah, <laughs> I tried it. I was like, "This is for kids, clearly." Yeah, <laughs> like action figures everywhere as well. I, like, I just yeah. didn't like the whole building building your defenses mm-hmm. while someone's trying to attack you. I was just like, "No, I don't, yeah. I don't like that." <laughs> just got bored of it very quickly, and I actually got annoyed with it. It confuses <laughs> the life out of me. Yeah. Like, he's like, "Oh, you're really good at shooting." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm good at shooting, but I kind of build for shit." You no. know what I mean, it's just not that thing. I was just like, I was brought up on Doom and Quake. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> on a keyboard and mouse. Unreal and uh, unreal. Unreal? unreal? Actual unreal? Actual unreal tournament, yeah. Oh, what a game. Do you ever play that tech? Maybe once or twice. Unreal tournament mm. in, was like eight, eight, 98, 99, 98, 99. Oh, 
That was, it was amazing. The, it was, I just remember the graphics were like, mm. oh. it was great back in the day. I remember the map. It's like a, a helix shape, is it? Oh yes. And yeah. it's like just floating in space. Yeah. And just falling off and dying yeah, all the time. <laughs> There's a lot of quake maps like that, no? Yeah. <laughs> so in your game side of it, is there room for like you to have any staff working for you, or like even, oh, for sure. even yeah. like young people looking for experience, mm -hmm. stuff like that? Well, we've talked about this between my, me and my so, uh, me and my partner. Uh, obviously, uh, Anna. She, like I said, she's at home watching our son. But uh, yeah, we, we've discussed this a few times, and uh, we agreed that like the current situation for people, especially in university, it's really difficult to find a place in the industry because there's so many people wanting to do it. Mm. It's a very saturated market, unfortunately. And um, w what we decided to do was, like, in the future when we had the capability, obviously, is offer, like, an apprenticeship of kind. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking, and, yeah. Uh, or even, I mean, I think the whole, uh, what's what's the word? Um, when they come in and they don't get paid, an unpaid inter internship. Yeah. Those are kind of d played out, I think, in the games industry. Like, everyone wants, everyone wants to do those because they get the benefit and don't have to pay anything but we felt like an apprenticeship would be a mutually beneficial thing for somebody coming in i suppose it depends someone might just want to get some experience that's true that's true you might have just just feed me and i'll and i'll do <laughs> <Yeah>. it <laughs> if someone's really passionate about it i just feel sometimes in a lot of industries the how the degree isn't the key no. uh, currency anymore no because um, you've got some really talented gamer who hasn't got, who has, or a coder who mm -hmm. hasn't got a degree but they just because you can just learn anything these days on, exactly. on the internet. Well, there's this big guy that I follow on uh, YouTube and um, all of his tutorials and stuff. He's called Mark Brunier, and he worked at Blizzard Entertainment for many years. And he didn't have a degree, but they initially hired him because of his quality of work. Exactly. But he lived in another country, and he was like, uh, "Dude, you don't have a degree. You need. A <laughs> we can't bring you over here without a visa or something, and you can't get a visa without a degree." So they had to work out some legal mumbo jumbo for that. Because it's like in a lot of industries, people years ago could just get in because they had a contact or mm -hmm. they would just take the chance on people and they'd get loads of experience and they get really good and you get to like now no you have to have a degree yeah but it, it's, it's like yeah. chicken and the egg thing well i can't get if you don't give me a job i can't get an experience but you won't mm -hmm. give me a job because i've got any experience exactly exactly <laughs> i mean especially speaking on the degree side i mean it's difficult as well to kind of gauge the quality of universities um yeah and i don't want to be too harsh on anybody but uh, i would recommend like t side over a Cumbria based one. Okay. We went to UOC. It was fine for teaching us the basics and such. Um, but we didn't get as the knowledge that we have is more stuff we've obtained ourselves. Right. Um, like on the side, like during the the, t the year two and year three, that's when you kind of jump into like the more. What was the qualification? Uh, we did digital arts, but it's changed now and it's a totally different name and. Digital art sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it sounds awesome. It sounds great. Um, but it's like, oh yeah, go make a website. And it's like, what's this got to do with games? Uh, uh, <laughs> I was when I was at college twenty years ago. I was doing web. They're doing a web. Yeah, doing a website. exactly. <laughs> yeah, and it was the same kind of stuff, you know. But um, uh, yeah, it was it was a bit of a weird course. Um, but I've heard very good things of T side stuff. Okay, so. that's good to know. Because gaming as a whole is much bigger now than it's probably ever been. Yes, right. like you've got the people getting paid to play games and mm -hmm. all the. Mm -hmm big gaming world championships yeah and, uh, it's just even well it's been going probably about 20 years you'd say stuff like that 20 25 it's been years. on the rise for yeah. i don't know what the yeah. first games were that they did competitively can you remember the, f the first competitive video games stuff uh, like pac-man or street Pac fighter or something they did that <laughs> <laughs> people gathering around in like um amusements uh, uh, no no amusements um what's the word you used to just hire like a exhibition centers and stuff didn't they? Or, or small yeah yeah small it's venues like a community center and they just yeah. go there and uh, yeah the winner yeah. gets a thousand dollars yeah yeah <laughs> now it's like a million like, uh, space invaders contest Spa in yeah space invaders those, oh, have yeah. you seen the new documentary on I, I've netflix watched, i've watched it yeah There's, i've not um, watched that yet no it's, i forgot what it's called high score high score, high score. right it's yeah i've netflix. seen it advertised yeah. it's, it's really good, good. there's different it doesn't do the typical chronological order. Mm -hmm. It just goes to different countries, to different types of games, right. where they originated. That's cool. My favourite one was the John Romero, of the whole Doom thing. Oh, that's John good. Yeah, that was towards amazing. the end. Yeah, yeah. He kind of persevered to get to that I one. I follow him on social media. He's brilliant. <laughs> He's amazing, John Romero, yeah. <laughs> He's got so many, like, cool photos from back in the day. Mm. He kept everything. Oh, that's amazing. I mean, um, one of my friends from university, actually, he reached out to him and got a quote for his dissertation. Wow. He was so pleased. Uh, <laughs> but anyone into amazing. games i recommend that yeah that, that, it's really good um it only came out a few weeks ago i think i'll just give it a watch it's like i think it's about six episodes yeah six yeah That's not bad. Uh, the episodes are a bit all over the place but they do loop back around yeah at the, the end 
It's like it goes to one place, then it goes to another place, then it goes. Right. Then it finally comes back to that first place where you started. <laughs> so <laughs> then then at the end, you go, it. "Oh, now that makes sense." <laughs> but those those Chinese, they were just a yeah, they just they're <laughs> insane. Honestly, yeah, the Koreans and stuff like that. Koreans as well, yeah. It's like Sega nearly went out of business until they hired a, a Chinese guy to come over. I think maybe a Japanese guy, the guy who created Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I can't remember his name. But yeah, I can't remember they, they need they needed a character for to, for for like to get the American market. Yeah, and he. He came to America and he drew, he went to a park in New York or wherever it was and he drew like a humanoid character, a Sonic the Hedgehog and something ridiculous like, like a rabbit. Yeah, a rabbit, something. I think it was. Right. And he just drew them all like, you know, made them all look yeah. different and funky and he went, which one do you like? And everyone said Sonic the Hedgehog or That's just amazing. the Hedgehog. So yeah. right, It was Robotnik, he drew Robotnik. Oh, Robotnik, he? yeah, that was it. Yeah. He was intended to be the protagonist. Yeah. Right. But everyone favoured the Sonic design. Yeah. Yeah. I still haven't seen That's the brilliant. film. Of Sonic the Hedgehog, the one there. Did they have oh, to, which yeah. had to redo, didn't they? Yeah, they yes. did. Yeah. <laughs> the first one was absolutely shite. Yeah. It, was the, it was just the design. Yeah. Sonic yeah. himself. Because like, they changed through. it and it was like, no, 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 you can't, no. But did you see the original Jumanji film? <laughs> the one from 96? Yeah, with Robin yeah. Williams in. Um, well, the kid, when he transforms into like a monkey, is what Sonic looked like in the trailers. Oh, right. Yes, yes. So yes bad. I do remember that. So yeah. <laughs> um, but the redesign, actually, it's a very good film. I'll, I'll, it's yeah, really I'll, good. I'd I'll recommend to, it. It's on my list to, to watch. I'll definitely watch it. <laughs> I mean, especially with this new gen coming out, I'm like, oh no. My boy wants an Xbox, I want a PlayStation. It's so expensive though, aren't <laughs> yeah, they? It's insane, it's insane. Have they released the prices yet for the yeah. two? No, they have. It's uh, 500, uh, 450, I think. For the Xbox One for X? The, for the Xbox One X, Series X. Oh, Series X, Series sorry. X. Yeah. That's less than I thought it was going to be. I think it's 450. Oh, the, the PlayStation, PlayStation 5? 450. The, first, uh, the PlayStation 450, but they have a digital version. That's oh, yeah. It's really strange. They look like a discless version. Yeah. Which is where we're going now. No yeah. discs. But it's unfortunate that the, the store marketplaces don't meet the prices of the, the high streets. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, well, Sony can save so much money. And then. Yeah, I was thinking about this the other day, more. actually. <laughs> Sometimes the only reason I buy a physical disc is because it's cheaper than buying it yeah. through the store. Like, oh. The store will still be like 50 quid where I can get it in a, sh in a shop for like 30 quid. Yeah. But I was thinking, well, that's probably why they're going to phase them out so they can just charge more on the. Exactly. You haven't yeah. got an option. You can't, no secondhand gaming, but like discs. Yeah. It's like GTA 5. Um, you can go into town and get that for like 12 to 18 pound, I think, in yeah. CEX or something. And then PlayStation Store, it's like, oh yeah, 40 pound, please. And it's like, it's been like five years old. Five year old. Yeah, <laughs> why would I pay that? But yeah, it's it's a strange situation, like especially the distribution of them all. But yeah, and the the the, talk, the big debate now is if you buy a game on the Xbox One, you should also get it when you if you buy the new console yeah. for free. Yeah. yeah, you should have to pay it, buy it twice. And there's like some people going smart yeah, delivery. Is sure, it called yeah. smart delivery? Yeah, that's the one. But that's been governed by Xbox, but it's optional to yes. the publishers, to the game developers. It's okay. not, so they can obviously COD and. Who's the other one? Yeah, Call of Duty's releasing its own version. Mm. Yeah, so you have to pay a certain price, or else you don't get it across board. Yeah, and it's and like, oh yeah, there was, a, there was somebody, one of the other studios as is well. Is it I EA? It might have been EA. Well, they're just they're just not gonna. They're not doing. It, I don't think. No. Um, you see, how come that's such an issue now? Because it was never an issue last generation. What was it? You had three sixty games and then Xbox One games. Uh, because it's yeah. totally separate. Because straight away they started making three sixty games playable on Xbox One. Yep. They did. So you yeah. could just carry it across any, either way. Yeah. But now. There's a big difference between if when you play a game on Xbox One and then when you if you then play see the version on the on the X, Series X, yeah, it's a massive difference. Oh, it's it seems unbelievable. Like I mean, I'm a PlayStation player primarily. I apologise, but uh, <laughs> um, like specifically the Spider-Man game, for example. Um, I don't know if you've seen it, but like when you play it on the PlayStation Four, there's a bit of a loading time and then you jump into the action. But the PlayStation Five is just bam straight away oh this is the other thing the loading time sh in this next it's generation gone, should yeah. be eradicated mm -hmm. it should be no you should put press play on the game and you should be in the at yeah. least at the menu in about 10 seconds yeah <laughs> at least i agree in that point some of the games like fifa or even red dead mm -hmm. just like you just like waiting for the first one he's going oh i gotta make a brew yeah <laughs> exactly just the yeah. thing in the bottom corner it's like, like oh it's drawn a map on this, the screen I'll I'm come not, back like, i know it's five years old but like, this is just Mm -hmm. It's too much. This, I thought that would have been eradicated in this current generation. In phone, yeah, and this is the Xbox One. Right? So I'm hoping for big things. Not that I'll be getting one for quite a while. I, know. <laughs> I mean, it was a bit of a messy launch for the PlayStation, but uh, yeah, no, it's it's apart from me. I just don't. I can't. I don't play it enough to warrant spending that much mm -hmm. money on it just yet. I if found that down recently. In, if it comes down in price, then I'll probably consider it in a year or so, or maybe two yeah. years. I, I yeah. don't know. But also, they're doing streaming now. 
Yes. X, X Cloud. X Cloud. Yeah. So I tried this. I was I was in the tr- the testing bit bit last year. All right. Um. So how was I, that? that sounds... It was all right. I've got a good connection at home. Mm-hmm. So, but I never really got a chance to try it going right. out. When fi- if five G was standard, I imagine this was going to be mm-hmm. not a problem. So I had my Xbox on. I had FIFA loaded up. Then I went upstairs and I loaded FIFA. I loaded the X Cloud thing on my phone, and I could play FIFA. The latest FIFA on your, on your phone. from my Xbox on my phone, and it was right. it was all, and I did it on my tablet as well. It was all right. But so then, do you need the Xbox on with the game. Uh, so that's 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 game streaming. That's different from X Cloud. Yeah, no, but this was this is what I was this was right. what I was trying last year. Um, so, but then the premise being that I could go out, and then yeah, pl- if my, as long as my Xbox was on, I could load it up on my phone and mm-hmm. carry on playing whatever I was playing. But then I was thinking, yeah, but really, I could do with would I have to take a controller with me everywhere I go? Because the yeah. phone, it's not depending on what game you're playing, it's not really ideal. No, yeah. But I get I get the. But I don't really. What's so? What is the full X Cloud thing then? Well, X Cloud is purely cloud based, so you don't need to own a console or any games. Mm. You just pay a subscription, right. get an account, and you play any game from that library on yeah, your right. device. And you've got your controller though, right? You have to have a controller. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think so. Yeah. Whereas game streaming is just if you have a console at home, you turn it on, and then yeah. you can play it wherever you are mm-hmm. in the world. Yeah. Over yeah. Wi-Fi. So yeah. then again, if I could have my tablet, I suppose linked. And I could have a controller Bluetooth to it mm. or something like that. That that would work, I suppose. I mean, the streaming side, it's a bit of an interesting topic because NVIDIA have their own. And then Google even tried to do it. Oh, was that Arcadia thing? Uh, Stadia. Stadia, sorry. Stadia, Stadia. yeah. yeah. Um, but that crashed and burned mm. very quickly. Uh, they had this ridiculous subscription pattern. Oh. And it was like, you had to pay a subscription. You also had to buy the controller, which was like £200. But then you also had to buy the games. Oh. So, like, it was... Two hundred pounds for the controller, forty pound for the game, and then ten pound a month <laughs> just to access your game that you already own. Greedy Google. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh. And then like everyone was like, "I'm not doing that." And then like there was this video that this damn video came out where like you press X on the Xbox controller or something, and he got to A to jump, and you press the jump button, and then like ten seconds later your character would jump because there was such a <laughs> long delay and it was just like wow you guys really didn't try and you're just trying to milk it for everything it is so they just, they just wanted the money yeah they did as if Google actually needs any more money exactly yeah <laughs> Google YouTube all that stuff and oh. it's like it's crazy it is crazy what? I don't know it's a shame really it's a missed opportunity on their part but I can see that that way of gaming working though I've if you've just got a controller with you and you can just play it play mm-hmm. games from anywhere 